This morning on Today investigates confusing and unwanted charges on your phone bill. The federal government says it's a $2 billion a year, a year scheme affecting millions of Americans, and you might be surprised just who's profiting from it. NBC senior investigative correspondent Lisa Myers joins us now with details. Lisa, good morning. Good morning to you, Anne. The practice is known as cramming. Rogue companies bury charges on your home phone bill for services you didn't even know about. It's been a national epidemic for more than a decade. So why do the phone companies still allow it to happen? In a new report, Senate investigators say it comes down to money. Lots and lots of money. For millions of consumers, the charges are a mystery. Shanna Zerbrig discovered she was being billed $14.95 a month for something called voicemail ID theft. I don't know what that is. I never asked for it. I never received it. Buried in Paul Temple's phone bill, over $16 a month for YCP network fax service. To me, it's just flat out fraud. Barb Arnold was shocked to find almost 40 bucks a month in charges for extra voicemails and her very own 800 number. First, I, I laughed because I thought, you know, an, an eight, 800 number, but then I was furious. Furious because in every case, the charges came from third-party companies they'd never heard of. It's called cramming, a billion-dollar scheme targeting everyone from families to professionals to seniors, where outside companies charge your phone bill for services without you even knowing it. And government investigators say many phone companies not only allow it, they profit from it. I'm shocked. I'm angry. Now, in a new investigative report, Senate Commerce Committee Chair Jay Rockefeller exposes the confidential deals between the crammers and major phone carriers like Verizon, AT&T, and CenturyLink Quest. Do the phone companies have a financial incentive to allow these unauthorized charges? The phone companies have an incentive because they're making a boatload of money off of the mysterious charges are often hard to catch. Shanna's were buried on page six of her phone bill. Barb's way back on page 12. She'd been charged every month for almost a year. The charges were small. That's why I missed them. And, and total, how much were you overcharged? When it was all said and done, I missed $300. But when these consumers called their phone carriers to complain, all say they got the brush off. They couldn't help me out. They're not the ones that did it, that it was a third party company and that I needed to call them and deal with them directly. I was arguing with them. I said, how can you let this happen? This is wrong. And Rockefeller says the phone companies know it. Internal documents show they've received hundreds of thousands of complaints about cramming companies. We wanted to track down some of these companies. So we came to Palm Harbor, Florida, where many list a corporate address. But instead of office buildings, we found them here. The company headquarters, seemingly only a P.O. box at the local post office. What does it tell you if all there is is a post office box? It tells me that it's a scam. Yet the phone carriers allow these companies to charge your bill without demanding proof you authorized it. They basically said I signed up for a service on the Internet, which I did not. And, you know, it was fighting to get my money back. The firm, which represents many of these companies, named Dedata, told us their offers require multiple authorizations from consumers. But victims say that's a lie. So we decided to pay Dedata a visit. I'm Lisa Myers with NBC News. Once again, we found the company in Palm Harbor, just down the street from the post office, in this unmarked building. Hi, did you come outside, please? A company rep didn't have much to say. Your lawyer has declined an on-camera interview, but we were in the neighborhood and wanted to give you another chance to talk to us. But Rockefeller says it's the phone carriers who have the most to hide in all this. The phone companies make money off this practice because every time something shows up, which is of a cramming nature, on one of their bills, they will make one or two dollars. Fees that add up to big money. Investigators say since 2006, these carriers have raked in more than $650 million from them. So if they're making that kind of money, why would they want to stop the cramming at all? 
All the phone companies declined to go on camera. While AT&T had no comment, in statements Verizon and CenturyLink said they do not tolerate cramming. They vet outside providers, verify authorization, and won't do business with problem companies. They say customers are offered refunds if they complain. But these victims say it took many threatening calls to get their money back. It makes me mad. It makes me want to um, not sign up with CenturyLink. It makes me want to call them and say I'm done. If the CEO of Verizon were sitting here, mm -hmm. what would you say to him? Stop it and stop it now. If they are the upstanding company that they say they are, then they need to not allow this to happen. The lesson here, check your phone bill very carefully every month. These cramming charges are often buried in the back and can be hard to spot. Now, to avoid cramming charges altogether, you can call your phone carrier right now and opt out of all third-party services. It costs you nothing to opt out, and it can save you money and headaches. And Sounds like a phone call to make. Lisa Myers, thanks so much this morning.